Hi, in this video I'm gonna show you how I made mini Mac mini, or in other words, how I converted Android TV box to run Linux. Enjoy! The idea for this build started after Wolfgang's video about IKVMs. I dug into the rabbit hole and found out that there are communities turning Android TV boxes into small ARM computers. If you think of it, it's like making Raspberry Pi at home for the fraction of the cost of the real one. I loved the idea that you can take some ARM box and switch the OS like it was casual PC, but with ARM processor. For me, that was unheard of. So I rushed to OLX and found the cheapest used TV box that was supposed to be flushable and was tested for running fork of Pi KVM. I will try to run this fork in the future video, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. The TV box I got was MXQ Pro 4K and I spent 50 zwot on it, which is about $12. When I unpacked and cleaned it, I immediately noticed similarities to one famous computer. The shape was right, it featured ARM CPU and this is how I was sold on idea to make it look like a mini Mac mini. During the build I made a lot of mistakes. I don't want to bore you and I will try to summarize them. Remember, I'm a total amateur when it comes to handcraft. I knew I had to visually change four things. The color, relocate LED diode, change the base and change the power plug. Starting from the last one, I decided to change onboard 5 volt parallel port to USB-C. I started off with designing and printing USB-C breaker board adapter to replace barrel plug with. I quickly realized that I overcomplicated the design by trying to make it solderable to the main board. So I designed something much simpler and was happy with the result. Links to all the models I made during this build are in the video description. To fit the new port I had to enlarge the barrel plug hole in the case. After that, I could glue my 3D printed adapter. Then, the port itself had to be removed from PCB. Let me tell you, doing stuff without proper tools is tedious. I had to cut port's detection pin with Dremel and then I could wiggle it out of the place while applying heat with soldering iron. I also struggled while soldering pins to breaker board while trying to hold them with clippers but I managed to get a decent result. Last thing to do was to solder the power and ground cables to the PCB. I connected the board to the monitor, plugged the power and the board was boot looping. In PC world, boot looping might indicate that not enough power is supplied to the motherboard and that was exactly the case. The cheap jumping wires that are often sold with Arduino kits are straight up junk. I replaced them with better quality ones harvested from broken servo. With wires changed, everything worked as expected. Deviating from the topic for a moment, trying to use the system that comes with the device is pure masochism. Ugh. Let's try one more time. <laughs> Feel the breeze of the fan. No, it will just crash. Okay, I'm done with this. Next thing to change was relocating LED diode. I knew I'd like to use optic cable to move light itself rather than moving LED diode. I bought cheap fiber optic cables of Amazon but it turned out that there are very narrow insight and small amount of light passes through it. I decided to sacrifice SPDIF cable as they have much larger diameter inside. Now it was a matter of drilling a hole in the case, gluing the cable and attaching it to LED diode. Changing case color was much more painful. My initial idea was to paint the case, so I used sandpaper to prepare the surface, 
applied three coats of primer and three coats of color and it looked decent. It obviously had imperfections, as it's always the case with home painting in a basement in the middle of winter. 24 hours passed since it was painted and I was trying to glue optic cable to the case. I lift the case laying on its back and on the next day I noticed a big mark imprinted on the surface. At the time I was thinking that the paint was not cured enough. So I sanded the thing once again and repainted it. This time I waited whole week before putting Apple sticker. I applied tape as a guidelines for the sticker and while removing it I noticed that the tape left stains on the surface. But those weren't stains, this was paint literally coming off. The paint I used was so fragile it could get scratched just from looking at it. I was so mad for the time wasted. In the end I tried a different approach using vinyl wrapping. I bought matte silver wrap and applied it to the case. I didn't bother filming as I was still angry at the paint I used but this turned out decent. Don't get me wrong, you can clearly see small air packets and cuts on the edges look like they were done by a man who looks at the screens his whole life. But as they say in the automotive world, if it looks good from a meter, then it looks good, for YouTube video at least. Paradoxically, the easiest part from the build was replacement base. I redesigned the bottom case to reassemble classic round Mac mini base. Not gonna lie, I once again overcomplicated the design. The first model I got printed at work, but I broke my rule of designing things like Kawashnikov and the print was too big for the outer case. I designed the second version by sticking to the rules and simplified the design to make support removal easier. I changed printer scenes so I was able to print it at home in the right color. You can also find the 3D model for the base in the description. I won't spend too much time discussing Linux installation on the TV box, as it was basically me following someone else's post on Armbian forum. The hardest part was literally to find the instructions for doing it. I will include a link in the description. You should know that these instructions are very likely different if you've got a board with CPU from different manufacture. My TV box uses Amlogic S905 CPU, so that's the guide I used. From myself, I can add that you will need a Linux machine to mount storage medium with flashed OS to perform some file modifications. This is because nor Windows or Mac comes with XT4 file system support out of the box. I also noticed that .dtb files you will need for your board tend to be named weirdly. For example, my CPU model is S905, but the matching .dtb file starts with P201 something. I found out that going into bootloader menu might help you establish what .dtb file you need. To be honest, I don't know what does this P201 even mean. If this is motherboard number or firmware version, but it might be displayed somewhere in a bootloader. This video is not a tutorial, so please don't ask me questions or how to install OS on TV box of your choice, because I don't know. There are many chip producers and much more models and for each model process might differ. If you want to make an ARM computer out of TV box, you should check out Armbian forum. Armbian is the OS that I'm running on this board and their forum is a very great knowledge source of how to do such conversion. Ok, now it's time to show you the final product. I converted this chip TV Android box not only to reassemble Mac Mini, but also made it an actual computer by installing Linux on it. Unfortunately, my practical CPU does not support installing Linux on built-in flash memory, so the system is running from SD card, but that is a small price to pay. The cost of this thing is only a fraction of Raspberry Pis, 
and it's even more powerful than certain models. What's also only a fraction of original is a raw computing power of this TV box comparing to real Mac Mini. Don't expect it to be usable daily machine. Trying to run any GUI software would be a struggle and that's why I'll be switching to non-GUI version of Ambient when I'm done with this video. Having said that, this thing makes great, super efficient microserver for running certain workloads or entertainment station for video or retro games emulation. I monitored power usage of this now computer and it never reached 5 watts. Obviously, when compared to Raspberry Pi boards, it lacks GPIO pins at the support that Raspberry Pis have. So you have to think of it as a project rather than a reliable solution. Nevertheless, Armbian team have done a massive amount of great work and I'm still amazed that this is even possible. This is all for now. I will revisit this computer in the future video in which I will try to use it as AKVM. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video or dislike if you didn't and subscribe for more computer, care solutions and technology related content. Thanks for watching.